Trinidad 3, lección 1, titled Mi Comida Favorita, My Favorite Food. Y estamos en Puerto Rico, we're here in Puerto Rico, so you'll get to learn about some Puerto Rican food in this chapter as well. Some of our learning objectives are to identify vocabulary related to food and beverages, to create sentences asking questions in Spanish, to create sentences stating which foods you like or maybe which foods you dislike, to demonstrate understanding of the verb gustar both with singular and plural nouns, to demonstrate understanding of ER and IR verb conjugations in Spanish, and to create sentences using properly conjugated ER and IR verbs. So kind of building a little bit on those things that you've learned before. So as always, we'll get started here with a short reading. Uh, you get to see uh, these two individuals having a conversation, Rodrigo and Ana are speaking here. And you see some photos, so let's get started. Letter A says, Hola, me llamo Rodrigo, y ella es Ana. Son las ocho de la mañana, y es importante comer un desayuno nutritivo todos los días. So, here you see, Hola, hello, me llamo Rodrigo, my name is Rodrigo, y ella es Ana, and she's Ana. And you see him sitting at the table here. Son las ocho de la mañana, it's eight o'clock in the morning, y... Es importante comer un desayuno nutritivo todos los días. So it's important, es importante, to eat, comer, un desayuno nutritivo, a nutritious breakfast. You can see in the picture here, it's labeled desayuno. This is all breakfast food here. So it's important to eat a nutritious breakfast every day. Uh, over here we see los huevos, some eggs, and el pan, the bread. I always tell my students to think about Panera, Panera bread. If you have a Panera in your area, um, Panera sells bread, right? Panera, pan. Okay, here in letter B, you see, Cuando tengo hambre, me gusta comer huevos y pan. Cuando tengo sed, bebo jugo de naranja. Me gusta mucho porque es rico. Nunca bebo café porque es horrible. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, cuando tengo hambre, when I am hungry, me gusta comer huevos y pan. So, when I'm hungry, I like to eat eggs and bread. And we saw those before, huevos y pan. Cuando tengo sed, when I'm thirsty, bebo jugo de naranja. And we can see a picture of it here, some orange juice. So when I'm thirsty, I drink orange juice. He says, me gusta mucho porque es rico. I like it a lot because it's rich. Um, people use the word rico to refer to tasty or delicious as well. A lot of you hear this used very commonly in Spanish culture. Oh, es rico, es rico. Everything is rico. Okay, and as you continue, you see here in our last sentence that nunca bebo café porque es horrible. So I never, nunca bebo café. I never drink coffee porque es horrible. This person and I would not get along. I never drink coffee because it's horrible, he says. And you see a picture of café down here. Uh, some other words that you see are la leche, milk, el cereal, cereal, and el yogur, yogurt. Um, another little uh, side note here. In, in the country of Puerto Rico, since that's where we are in this chapter, in Puerto Rico, instead of jugo uh, for orange juice, we say jugo de china, jugo de china. Uh, and also, for banana, instead of saying banana or platano, in Puerto Rico, they say guineo. Guineo. So something interesting there. Um, you have some question words in this chapter. How, why, what, where, when. And we'll be going over those in just a bit. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those now. You have the words compartir here, to share. Compartir. And otro. Other. Otro. Okay, let's continue our reading. So here you see letter C. Es la una, y ahora Marisol y yo comemos el almuerzo. En la cafetería venden muchas comidas, sándwiches, hamburguesas y sopa. También venden bebidas, leche, jugos y refrescos. So, es la una. It's one o'clock. Y ahora, and right now, Marisol y yo comemos el almuerzo. Right now, Marisol and I are eating almuerzo. We're eating lunch. You can see him here in the picture, almuerzo. They have all kinds of lunch foods out, almuerzo. En la cafetería venden 
muchas comidas. So in the cafeteria, venden, they sell. Venden comes from the verb vender, which means to sell. Think about a vendor who sells things. So in the cafeteria, they sell lots of foods, such as sandwiches, sandwiches, hamburguesas, hamburgers, y sopa, soup. And you can see here, uh, we have a sandwich de jamón y queso, a ham and cheese sandwich, jamón, ham, queso, cheese, uh, an hamburguesa, a hamburger, and la sopa, soup. It says here that también venden bebidas. They also sell beverages, bebidas, so comidas, foods, bebidas, beverages. And the foods they include, or the beverages they include here, excuse me, are leche, milk, jugos, juices, and refrescos, soft drinks or soda. Okay, and on our last letter here, letter D, we see that Marisol y yo compramos fruta para mi papá, manzanas, bananas, y uvas. La cena es a las siete y tengo ganas de comer. Siempre como mucho cuando mi mamá prepara la comida. So, Marisol and I compramos fruta para mi papá. Uh, Marisol and I are buying fruit for dad. We buy fruit for my father. Para mi papá. Uh, we're buying manzanas, apples, bananas, bananas, that's pretty easy, y uvas, grapes. It tells us that la cena es a las siete. So la cena, you see featured here, la cena, dinner, la cena. Uh, dinner is at seven, y tengo ganas de comer. And I have feelings of eating, or you would say, I feel like eating. Tengo ganas de comer. Siempre como mucho cuando mi mamá prepara la comida. So I always eat a lot. Siempre como mucho cuando mi mamá prepara la comida. When mom does the cooking, when mom prepares the food. Okay. Um, a little activity for you here. I want you to take a look. There are a total of eight hidden beverages in this photo, and they're hidden all around, uh, not intended to be seen. So, for example, uh, one of the one of the things that we see here is el yogur, a yogurt. You can see it here hidden on this guy's shirt. There are eight total things hidden. I want you to take a moment, pause your audio, and see how many of these things you can find, okay? When you're ready, you can unpause. Okay, so now that you've got a second to try these, let's take a look. I want to point out a few things. Uh, over here on the side of the little dish towel, we have el huevo. An egg, el huevo. We already talked about el yogur. Um, over here, by the paper towels, we see el pan at the top, some bread, el pan. Um, other things we see over here on the trash, you see la manzana, an apple. In this girl's ponytail, we have las uvas, some grapes, las uvas. This woman's shirt uh, or sweater looks like it has some pizza on it, la pizza. Uh, this woman's backpack has a, or purse, has a sandwich falling out. It's a sandwich. And I believe there's one more thing. Uno mas. Uno mas. Well, that's the majority of these that you see here. Uh, just various foods displayed in a hidden format, just to give you some practice. Now, if we were here in person together, I would also ask you to engage in some speaking practice. Um, and here you see a partner A is asking a question. Do you like blank or blank more? And your partner is going to respond to, oh, I like whichever one more. So even though you're online, uh, you can do this on your own. I'll ask the question for you. <laughs> I'll be part A and I'll let you be part B. So for example, as we look at the model, as I would ask the question, I'm asking you, te gusta mas? Do you like more? Te gusta mas? Comer? To eat? Papas fritas? Which we see here on the left. O pizza? So which one do you like eating more, french fries or pizza? Te gusta más comer papas fritas o pizza? And uh, you would respond however you feel there. Me gusta más comer la pizza. Okay, let's try a couple of these. We're not going to do all of them. I just want to do a few with you. So let's start with number one. Te gusta más comer el cereal o los huevos? Te gusta más comer el cereal Oh, los huevos. So decide which one you like more. And using this expression you see here on the right, tell me I like more eating whichever item. So for example, if I were answering, I would say, me gusta más comer el cereal. Let's try another one. Uh, número cinco. Te gusta más comer 
la manzana o la banana? ¿Te gusta más comer la manzana o la banana? You like eating apples or bananas more? I would say, personally, me gusta más comer la manzana. Uh, me gusta más comer la manzana porque no me gustan las bananas. Okay, I think you're getting the hang of that there. Um, I want to introduce you to some question words in Spanish. This was our other major learning objective for this chapter, to create sentences asking questions in Spanish and to be able to identify vocabulary related to interrogative words. So you see a few words featured here. You see quién, which means who, cuándo, when, cuál, which, qué, what, por qué, why, cuánto, how much, or cuántos, when you make it plural, how many, cómo, how, and dónde, where. Now, some of these you are probably already somewhat familiar with, and others are new. So, um, the best thing to do is just to memorize these, okay? Make flashcards, study them, that kind of thing. However, I also have a song here that I think will be helpful to you. I found this on YouTube um, a couple of years ago, and I've been using it in my classes, and my students really seem to enjoy it. So, uh, let's take a moment, listen to this song. will help you to remember some of these words. Again, por qué means why, cuando, when, qué, what, donde, where, cuánto, how much, cómo, how, and quién means who is there. So these are your various interrogative words in Espanol. So I'm going to show you a little passage here. And you know nothing about these people, okay? However, you can probably infer the proper question word to be used in these sentences. So, for example, number one says, blank, necesita Rodrigo. And your options up here in pink are como, how, donde, where, quien, who, por qué, why, 
or K, what? So blank needs Rodrigo. Blank does Rodrigo need? We would ask, what does he need here? So therefore, we should use K, and number one, K. Let's do another one. Number two says, blank se llama la amiga de Rodrigo. You learned back in the very beginning of this course in the Lección Preliminar chapter that we use the phrase como se llama to ask what is his or her name. So in this case, como se llama la amiga de Rodrigo. What is, ami what is Rodrigo's amiga's name? Como se llama. I want you guys to take a moment. Please pause your audio and give numbers three, four, and five a quick try for me. When you're ready, you can unpause. All right, so now that you've had a second to look at these, uh, let, let's take a moment to, take, to check your answers. So number three, ask us, de blank es Alicia? And we're asking, where is Alicia from? From blank is Alicia. So from where? De donde. De donde es Alicia? Number four, blank va a escuela Rodrigo. So we're only left here with two options. We have quién, who, and por qué, why. So who goes to school, Rodrigo, or why goes to school, Rodrigo? It makes more sense to say why. Por qué va a escuela, Rodrigo? Which leaves only quién left for our last one. Quién es Trini Salgado? Who is Trini Salgado? Okay, so the next thing I'd like to talk to you guys about today is the difference between gusta and gustan. There are various forms of gustar. Um, and in this case, the verb gustar must agree in number, not in gender, but in number with the noun that it modifies. So in this case, uh, you see your various forms of gustar that you learned earlier this year. Me gusta, te gusta, le gusta, nos gusta, us gusta, les gusta. So I like soup, you like soup, he or she likes soup. So notice that gusta is not changing. The indirect object pronoun that comes in front of gusta, in this case, me, te, le, nos, os, or les, those things are changing based on who does the liking. But gusta, gusta does not change. Gusta goes with sopa in this case, because there's only one soup here. I like soup, singular. So gusta. Now, if I said I like soups, and I were to put an S on this, then gusta would change to agree with soups. In that case, it would become gustan, where we would add an N on the end because it would be modifying a plural noun at that point. So I always tell my students to remember, if you like one thing, use gusta. If you like more than one thing, use gustan. And you can see examples here. Me gusta el cereal. I like cereal. There's cereal here is singular. There's only one cereal in this sentence. So we're using gusta. Come over here, though. Me gustan las uvas. There are multiple grapes here. Uvas has an S on it, so does las. So in this case, I have to say me gustan instead of me gusta. All right, I want to give you a chance to practice these. Uh, this activity is titled In el Supermercado, in the supermarket, and it gives you here a sentence, and you have to decide if this person likes or dislikes whatever item in the sentence. So for example, the model tells us that El yogur es horrible a Rodrigo. So yogurt is horrible to Rodrigo. So we're trying to say that Rodrigo does not like yogurt. We started out here, we said a Rodrigo no le gusta el yogur. And you may remember from before, we're using le gusta because le gusta goes with the he or she form of gustar. So no le gusta, he does not like el yogur. Let's do another one. And number one, it tells us that las uvas son ricas. The grapes are rich. A ti, to or for you. So if grapes are rich, grapes are tasty, you like them. So we're trying to say you like grapes. So starting out with you like, we're going to say a ti, te. And then you have to choose either gusta or gustan. And las uvas. Well, in this case, we have multiple grapes. Las uvas, both of which have an S. So instead of te gusta, we said te gusta. A ti te gustan las uvas. Check out number two. It tells us that la sopa es buena a Marisol. And we're trying to say that Marisol, in this case, likes soup. So how many soups are here? Well, the word soup, sopa, is a singular noun. It does not have an S on it. So we should say a Marisol le gusta la sopa. We chose le, in this case, to go with Marisol, or she, and we're using gusta to go with sopa, a singular noun. 
I want you to take a moment, pause your audio, and please give numbers three through six a try for me. Okay, now that you've got a second to try these, let's take a look. Number three tells us that el cereal es malo a nosotros. So the cereal is bad, two or for us. So we're trying to say that we do not like cereal. So here we should say a nosotros no nos gusta el cereal. In this case, nos <clears throat> had to agree with nosotros. And gusta had to agree with cereal, a singular noun. So a nosotros no nos gusta el cereal. Número cuatro. Los huevos son horribles a mí. Eggs are horrible to me. So in this case, how many eggs do we have? One or more than one? Ah, good job. We have more than one in this case. Huevos, plural. So we should say a mí no me gustan los huevos with an N on the end. No me gustan los huevos. Number five, el café es muy bueno a usted. So coffee is very good to you formal. Well, if it's good, we're going to say you like it. A usted le gusta el café. We did not have to change gusta to gustan in this case because there's only one café here. Café is a singular noun. And number six, los jugos son nutritivos a ellos. Uh, the juices are nutritious to them, a ellos. Uh, if they're nutritious, they probably like them. We're going to say a ellos les gustan los huevos. We added an N on gusta. We had gustan here because we have multiple juices. Los jugos with an S on the end. Okay, and the final thing I'd like to discuss with you um, is a process in regard to conjugating ER and IR verbs in the present tense in Spanish. Now, you already know how to conjugate AR verbs. And as we talk about that, I want to throw back here. I don't know if it's Thursday where you are, but we're going to have a throwback Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day uh, you're on as you're watching this video. But I want to take a moment and look back at these subject pronouns that you learned back at the very beginning of our semester. So you have yo, which means I, tu, which is you, informal, él, he, ella, she, and usted, you formal. Nosotros, we, vosotros, you all, only in Spain. Ellos and ellas both mean they. And ustedes is you all, used everywhere other than Spain. So, keeping that information in mind, you may recall back to when we conjugated an AR verb. We had a verb like hablar, to speak, to talk. And to conjugate hablar, we had to chop off our AR. We're left with H-A-B-L. I always tell my students you have to then hobble on down, H-A-B-L. Carry it down. We're going to add our appropriate present tense endings, and we end up with hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablais, habla. Now, these endings, o, as, a, amos, ais, and an, only work for AR verbs. They don't work for ER or IR verbs. So, today, we're going to teach you your ER and IR verb endings. So, take a basic verb, uh, for example, the verb comer. We've been using comer a lot. Comer is to eat. As we take off our ER in comer, we're left with C-O-M, com. And we need to go through and add our new endings in this case. So our endings here are O, es, E, emos, ace, and en. O, e, es, E, emos, ace, and en. Notice. These are really similar to your AR verbs. We're basically just swapping these A's out for E's. So instead of O, AS, A, AMOS, AIS, AN, now you have O, AS, A, AMOS, AS, N for your ER verbs. IR verbs are very similar as well. They're almost the same as the ER. The only difference here is that the NOSOTROS and the VOSOTROS forms do change a little bit. So here we have O, AS, A, EMOS, Is and N. So they're all the same. Instead of Amos and Ace, we have Emos and Is. So slightly different. Okay, let's give you a chance to practice these a little bit. So here, uh, this activity is called Comer o Beber, to eat or to drink. So you have to decide. It's going to give you a person, and it's going to give you a food or a beverage. And you have to decide 
if the person eats or drinks uh, whichever item and then create a sentence saying that they eat or drink that item. So, for example, in the model you see Rodrigo and cereal. Rodrigo and cereal. Well, we have to decide does he eat or does he drink cereal? Well, he eats cereal. So we're going to take the verb to eat, comer. We're going to chop off our er and we're going to say that Rodrigo come. And we used come in this case because we knew that Rodrigo was he. For our bottom left box for he, our ending should be an e. So we're going to say that Rodrigo come cereal. And number one, you see that Rodrigo y Marisol and uvas. Uvas are grapes. So do you eat or drink grapes? Well, hopefully you eat them. So we're going to say that Rodrigo y Marisol, our verb here is comer, to eat. As we look at comer, we're going to chop off the ER. We know that uh, Rodrigo and Marisol would be they. So using our bottom right box, the correct ending to go with they should be EN. And our final answer here would be that Rodrigo y Marisol comen uvas. Okay, keeping this in mind, I want you to take a moment Pause your audio and give numbers two through eight a quick try for me, please. Two through eight. When you're ready, you can unpause. All right, so now that you've had a second to take a look at these, um, let's check your answers. Number two gives us tú, you informal, and refrescos, soft drinks. Well, we know that you drink soft drinks, so in this case we are using the verb beber, not comer. Uh, in the to form for beber, our ending using this to box should be es. So our final answer should be that tu bebes refrescos. Number three gives us ustedes and pan. So you all in bread. Well, you all eat bread. We know that ustedes is our bottom right box here. To say that you all eat, we're going to take our verb comer, chop off our er, and throw in the proper ending. Ustedes comen pan. Number four gives us Marisol y yo en sopa. So to say that Marisol and I, uh, this is a controversial one. I guess you can both eat and drink soup. I'm going to say you eat soup, okay? So Marisol y yo, we're using comer to eat. We're going to chop off our ER. We know that Marisol and I would use this top right box for we. So Marisol y yo comemos sopa. We use the ending of EMOS here for the we form, nosotros. Number five, Anna and hamburguesas. So Anna eats or drinks hamburgers. Well, we know she eats them. We're going to use comer. Anna would be my bottom left box here, she. So we're going to say that Anna come hamburguesas. Number six, usted en sandwiches. You formal in sandwiches. Well, we know that you eat sandwiches, so we're going to use comer instead of beber. We know that usted is our bottom left box here, and ella usted. We're going to take our er off of comer, and in this case, we're adding an e. So usted come los sandwiches. Number seven, yo, and then jugo de naranja. So I and orange juice. Well, decide, do you eat or drink orange juice? Well, you should, you should drink it. <laughs> so we have beber as our verb this time. We're going to chop off our er and beber. We're using the yo box, our top left box. We know that the correct ending here should be an o for an er verb. So we're going to say that yo bebo el jugo de naranja. And number eight, los maestros and café, the teachers and coffee. Uh, well, the teachers drink coffee. I can certainly agree with that. Um, we're going to use the verb to drink here, beber. Chopping off our er, we're left with beb. We have to ask yourself, well, the teachers, would that be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? The teachers would be they. So in this case, we should use our bottom right box. We're going to say that los maestros beben el café. Beben, with an E-N. Okay, one last thing I want to bring to your attention here. Uh, you've learned a lot in this lesson about vocabulary related to food and beverages, question words in Spanish and how to conjugate ER and IR verbs in the present tense. The last thing that I want to leave you with here is the verb hacer. It's an ER verb. So as you conjugate hacer, all of the forms are normal except for the yo form. If you just chopped off your ER and you threw your normal present tense endings on there, you would get aco, haces, hace, hacemos, haces, and hacen. All those are right except for the yo form. It is not aco, 
but instead ago. The C changes to a G. It becomes ago. So please be aware of that. That's the only super irregular one you need to know about as of right now. Okay, this is no different than some of the other verbs you learned about, like tener was tengo instead of teno. It's just an irregular yo verb. Same thing here. Instead of ako, it is ago. Guys, as always, I hope these videos are helpful to you. If at any point you have any questions whatsoever, please know you can always reach out to me. I'm always just a quick email or phone call away. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful uh, rest of your week, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.